Today, we want to go uh, over some substitution again, make sure that we have a method in hand and that we understand when the method is working, what it takes for the method to work, and how we can recognize when the method isn't working. That's an important thing to know. It's not important, it's not just that we have to be able to look at a recipe and follow the recipe. We have to be able to know that we're looking with, that we're, when we look at our work, whether it's not going to work or not. So like, like if you, if you uh, cook, if you bake bread, you have to know when there's too much of something by looking at the dough and say, this dough isn't going to work. I have to change it in some fashion. And you have to know what that is. What's gone wrong? I think there's an image that runs around uh, with a bunch of cookies that have too much of something. And what it looks like when your cookies have too much of something, so you know what went wrong. It's important to be able to look at the product and say, something has, is not working here and recognize that when that happens. So you don't try to serve cookies that have had no sugar put in them because you doubled up on the baking soda. You put baking soda in when you meant to put in sugar because they're both white powder. Or when you're, you have to look at the cookies and say, something's going wrong with this cookie before you just start handing them to people. Or you like start handing out the cookies to the kids at the birthday party. And your roommate comes in and says, uh, hey, where's all my cocaine? And you're like, oh no. And then like all the kids are like all freaking out. You know what I mean? So let's talk about substitution. We are integrating. And we're going to write the result of the chain rule. We take the derivative of the outside with respect to the inside. And the chain rule requires that we have, we multiply by the derivative of the inside. Our technique was to replace the inside with uh, a variable. So our technique is to take the inside And we called it W. Then we have to decide what, will, what we need to make this substitution go. To make this substitution work, if I want W to equal G of X, oops, not G prime of X. If I want W to be G of X, that means we need g prime of x as a factor in our integral because we're trying to do substitution. So that g prime of x dx, all that's going to be replaced with dw. What we, what we mean is that we need something to be the DW when we trade over our X's or W's. I need something to replace the DW. In my integral, I need a constant multiple of G prime of X DX. This can be off by a constant, but it can't be off by any variables. Then our outside function, This is the function that we're actually going to be integrating. So that when we integrate the function, or actually when we do the substitution, the integral becomes f prime of w dw.
Then when we integrate, since now we have this f prime of w dw, I can integrate the function. The integral of f prime is just f. And then we can replace our w with the g of x. And that's where we will be done. This is working. Substitution is going to work once we make the decision for what W represents, that we have something to be the DW. I need something to be the DW. This G prime has to be represented in our original integral. It can be off by a constant factor, but we need something to be the dw. So this g prime of x it can be off by a constant factor. The only extra stuff that we could see in the g prime would be some constant factor because we can divide out a constant factor. If dw is equal to some constant times g prime of x dx, I can rewrite this as one over k times dw is g prime of x dx. Constants we can fix, variables we can't. Wrong functions we cannot. One thing to note is that we talked about, um, so back when we were talking about our building block integrals, where we turned all our derivatives into integrals, if we have a linear function inside of some other function, this is a substitution that, we, uh, that I said, we should just be able to do this. The integral of sine of 2x is going to be negative 1 half cosine of 2x plus c. This is sine of k times x. That just produces a one over k in our integral. And this one over k dw is where that one over k comes from. This is just substitution, but before we knew about substitution. This is where I was like, oh, oh you've been using substitution all along. Click your heels together and say there's no place like home. So you already did substitution. You're just doing a shortcut version of this. If we say that w, is 2x. First of all, that means we're saying that the outside function is sine of what's going to be w. So the thing that we're actually integrating is sine of w. So if w is 2x, then dw is 2 dx. Now I look at my original integral, and I've got that factor of dx, but it doesn't have a 2. So we're off by a constant, and we can just divide out the constant. So in this case, the dx is going to be replaced with a 1 half of dw. Now we're ready to substitute.
sine of 2x, sine is still around. But instead of 2x, I'm replacing that with w. And the dx is going to be replaced with a 1 half dw. And now we're integrating just sine of something. The integral of sine of w is negative cosine. Just looking at the red part, the integral of sine is negative cosine. We have this constant multiple of one half. And this was the sine of W. We have now integrated, which is why we're not writing the integral symbol or the DW part. We have now integrated, so it's appropriate to include the constant of integration. But then we have to replace our W with our original integral or our original inside, which is two X. I still have this constant of one half because I'm just plugging W in. So back when we were learning our base model integrals, integral of sine of KX is minus one over K times the cosine of KX plus C. That's where that one over K came from. We can think of doing a substitution on that problem. Any questions? Notice that before we begin, after we identify the inside, there's three things. We identify the inside, we identify the DW, that's what makes the substitution work. Then we, enter, then we decide, then we figure out what the outside function is. This is all based on our choice of what we think the inside function is. We make this choice. The DW is what tells us that'll make the substitution work. Then we got to figure out what the outside function is so we know the, what we're actually integrating. So that we look at this and say, we're integrating the sine function. So there's going to be a negative cosine at some point. Any questions? Oops. A little room. I'll leave a little space. Let's suppose I want to know what the integral of I'm going to set up. Let's suppose, first of all, that we want to set up a substitution problem. Let's suppose that I want to integrate sine something times the sine of x to the fifth. What do I need to make a sub, this into a substitution problem? We're going to need the derivative of the inside, which is 5x to the fourth. The important part of that is the x to the fourth. I need a constant multiple of 5x to the fourth. So I'd probably just put an x to the fourth. If I wanted to mess with you, I'd be like all 7x to the fourth. But that's not going to work on you. Y'all are professionals. You're really good at integration. We've spent two whole days on integration by substitution. So you're experts now. We've done like five problems. You should be experts by now, right? That's how, that's how skills work. So you're gonna look at this seven and say, oh, psh, I don't care about this seven. This X to the fourth, that's what's gonna make this a substitution problem. Inside is X to the fifth. Outside here is an X to the fourth. That's what's gonna make this substitution work. It's really important that you identify what's gonna make the substitution work. What's my DW? 
that will make this a substitution problem. So your choice, your natural choice here is that W should be an X to the fifth. DW is five X to the fourth DX. And then we're gonna move that five over to the DW because we're looking at the X to the four. Once you choose what the inside function is, you go looking for the DW. You think, what's gonna be my DW? If W is X to the fifth, what's my DW? My DW needs to be something X to the fourth. And that's what I've got right here. That's the important question to ask. And it's important to understand that it comes from the chain rule and this is how substitution works. So if you look at this and say, I'm gonna make the inside sign, then to make a substitution W equals sine work, I need to have DW equal cosine. And we ain't got that. There's no cosine anywhere. So sine is not gonna be our substitution. Until, until later when we have odd powers of sine, but that's, that's for That's when we're better at substitution. Once we make this choice, W is X to the fifth, this X to the fourth is what makes the substitution go because this X to the fourth is going to be my DW. That means our outside function is sine. That's the thing that we're actually integrating. So this is another sine of something integral. So I like to remind myself of that too. So my new integral, I'm gonna take the seven, I'm gonna kick it all the way out the integral, but I'm gonna put it on the numerator because there's a five showing up from the DW. X to the fourth DX is being replaced with a one fifth DW. So that one fifth is showing up out in front. X to the fourth is gone because it's the DW. I have sine, that's the function that we're actually integrating. X to the fifth is my W. So that one fifth and the DW replaces the X to the fourth and the DX. The seven, that was there at the beginning. We just, that just hangs out. Now we integrate our function. The integral of sine of something is negative, leave a space, cosine of that thing plus C. In red is the function that we're actually integrating. So that's the basic rule that we're gonna use. Integral of sine is negative cosine. But then we have to make sure we get all the trappings. The negative seven, seven we have a seven to the fifths that just gets carried along, or sorry, seven fifths. And then finally, we replace the W with the X and the fifth. Questions? Okay. This skill, this is just a skill. If you do a thousand problems, you get better at it. If you do 10,000 problems, you'll be a little bit better at it. A little bit. You have to decide how much of this skill do you want to acquire? Do I want to be, if you have to decide for yourself, do I want to be really good at integrating stuff? Or do I want to make sure that I can kind of explain the method, but I'm not going to be worried about whether I can execute the method 
on difficult problems. Incidentally, we have not encountered anything difficult yet. These are all nice, straightforward, right down the middle fastball, integration by substitution problems. Is everybody okay? Everybody looks stunned. You all look like this. But it's Monday, so I kind of expect it. Power was out at my house last night. Every time I walked in the room, I still hit the light switch. I could not keep in my head that the power was out. I just would walk into the room, room dark, turn light on. Oh, yeah. Every room that I went to. Knowing this and wanting to read, I have a little battery backup. So I plug the lamp into the battery. And I was sitting there reading, and then eventually the light went out because the battery went uh, ran flat because I hadn't been charging it. It wasn't fully charged when I plugged the lamp in. Ran like it, whatever it was, like 930. The lamp goes out. Even though I knew that the lamp was plugged into the battery, partially because I had moved the lamp to where I was sitting. Normally the lamp is over there in the, in the living room. I thought, oh, since it's mobile now, I'll bring it over here and read here. Lamp goes out because the battery runs flat. I was still surprised. I'm like, well, what the heck is this? And it took me a good three or four seconds to remember, oh yeah, 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 the, the, the power is out. I guess what I'm saying is don't get old. Stuff starts to fall apart. Any questions on substitution? Not on getting old because what are the chances I'm going to remember that? Substitution I'm probably stuck with for the rest of my life because I've done this so much. You know what I mean? Like when you're practicing something, you want it, you can practice it until you can do the thing. So for example, if you're learning a song on a piano, you can practice the song until you can play it. But if you're gonna be performing that song, you wanna practice it to the point you can't mess it up, no matter what happens. You wanna practice to the point you can't mess it up. Because you're gonna be distracted if you're performing for people. You're gonna be standing there and say, oh, everybody's gonna be watching. You want to make sure that no matter what you're thinking about, your fingers and your hands can say, don't worry, I got you. And they could just play it. You know what I mean? Same kind of thing for math skills. If we happen to be in a class that you were going to take a test where you're going to sit down and take a test, you don't practice this until you can do it. You practice this until you can't fuck it up. Where you can start doing the process we start writing the process and whatever happens, the process just comes, it just, just flows out, just keeps going. You know what I mean? Because during a test, if you're taking the test with the rest of the class, you might be trying to work on a problem and someone gets up and walks out the room and then all of a sudden you're thrown off. You it's like, oh wow, that, that person is leaving. What the heck? Then you look back at what your problem thinking, what was I doing? That means you haven't practiced enough. Now, the bad news is there might not be enough time between the time you start practicing and the time that the test happens for you to have practiced that enough. And that's one of the great unfairness, unfairnesses of the way we do school. You know what I mean? Anybody get nervous during the test? Anybody that says they don't get nervous during a test is what I call a, a liar. Or right now, the material is easy enough that the amount of time that between when you start practicing and the test is applied to you, you have practiced enough that you can't mess it up. For some of you, can't mess it up level of skill comes along in a couple of days. That's just a fact. There are some of you in the room right now 
the only advantage that I have over you in an integration battle is the 20 years of experience I have integrating things. Oh wait, no, sorry. 30 years of experience I have integrating things. I started integrating things in 1990. That's my advantage. If it came down to pure just skill, if it was about, if you were up against me in the 90s, let's say, plenty of you would be better at it than I am. Because you pick things up faster. Does that make sense? You just happen to be naturally better at it. You're gonna go play, play basketball and you happen to be seven feet tall, 300 pounds, and still pretty athletic. You're just gonna be better at it than everybody else in the room. Kind of automatically. Make sense? So for some of you, this class is still at that level. You do things a few times, you can't mess it up. The stuff is still easy for you. For some of you, the time between we start practicing and a test is gonna be applied, which is not gonna happen in this class because I run things differently, but that amount of time is not enough to, for you to get to the point where you can't mess it up. So that means you have to work on the other skill that goes with taking a test. Focus in the face of distraction. So, what you have to do if you have, so I know some of you might get nervous during tests and you might start forgetting things during a test. What you have to do is practice that feeling. Somewhere, is, so there's so, at some point you might be sitting down and the piece of paper says test at the top of it. Then you start to panic. You feel your blood pressure go up, you feel res respiration, you start sweating and you start to panic. The problem is when we're practicing, we tend to not feel that. So we think we're ready for the test, but we're not. We've prepared with the material, but we're not ready for the conditions of the test. So what you have to do when you sit down to practice for a test, practice, not study, practice for a test, you have to sit down and look for that feeling. Start to feel that panic run up and then start the problem. Does that make sense? You have to seek that feeling out. How's that okay? Some of you don't get nervous during tests. You're like, oh, no, I wasn't lying when I said, no, it doesn't bother me at all. That just means you count yourself as lucky. And wait for the math class that will change that. Because eventually there's going to be some math class. And this math class is going to come along and say, hey, I heard you're really good at math. And you're like, oh, yeah, I'm hella good at math. And this one class will come along and say, not anymore. Welcome to Algebraic Topology. I hope you've been practicing your hard work because your talent stops here. Make sense? Some of you that happened in arithmetic. Some of you that arithmetic was fine. Algebra sucks. Some of you algebra was fine. Calculus sucks. Some of you calculus is fine. Something else will suck. Some of you, nothing. Everything is gonna be fine. You're gonna graduate. You're like walking around getting your bachelor's degree in math. And you're like, oh, well, that was easy. And you're going to go to grad school and you're going, all right, give me some questions. And they're going to be like, oh, no, you're a PhD candidate. We don't ask you questions. You find a question to answer. And you're like, oh, I can only do this Lisa Simpson style where you give me the test and I, you tell me what I'm going to have to do, then I learn how to do it. You know what I mean? This is not this one here, sine, uh, sorry, seven sine to the fifth of two X. This is not a substitution problem yet. Yeah. 
anyone see what I'm going to need to make this a substitution problem? Oh, I cheated a little bit because I used an odd power of sign. But let's make this a nice first day um, substitution problem. We've got a 2x to be the inside, but is that going to be our true inside function? Is there something else? Remember what we mean when we say sine to the fifth. That means take the sine of 2x and raise it to the fifth power. If I write it this way, what is it that we need to turn this into a nice, simple, fastball down the middle integration by substitution problem? We write this, we see 2x is inside, but we also see that the sine of 2x is inside the x to the fifth. If I want W to equal sine of 2x, what do we need to make the substitution, that substitution work? If W, if we want W to be the sine of 2x, what is it that we're gonna need for a DW? So the dw, the derivative of sine of 2x is cosine of 2x times 2 dx. So if I want to make this a substitution problem, I need this factor of cosine of 2x. And that will be the derivative of the inside. You see sines and cosines with the same argument mixed up in an integral problem? That one of those is going to be your inside. We need to identify what the outside function is. Once I say that w is sine of 2x, that means I need a cosine of 2x to be the dw. And we also need to know what we're actually integrating. Sine of 2x is being raised to the fifth power. So our outside function. is something to the fifth power. So the integration that's happening is going to be a one sixth x to this or w to the sixth power. That's the, the outside function, the one that we're actually going to be integrating. The sine of 2x is going to be the w. The cosine of 2x has to be there to be the dw. So if I wanted to give you a nice straightforward integration by substitution problem, I would leave with this. I'd actually make sine to the fourth just to make you not have to worry about some weirdness that might be going on. Now I look at this, I see there's a cosine of two X dx is a dw. So I'm gonna divide out a one half and say that half of the dw is the cosine of two X dx. And I'm just going to replace this part with a one half dw. So my substituted integral, I'm going to kick the constant factor out. I'm also going to kick this constant factor out. The function that we're actually integrating is a fifth power. Sine of 2x has all been replaced with w. Cosine of 2x dx has all been replaced with a one half dw. And there's the integral that we're, there's the substituted integral. Now we can integrate the integral of something to the fifth power is one sixth that thing to the sixth power.
plus c. I'm going to put these uh, factors together, so that's going to make a seven twelves. W is the sine of two x. And that's being raised to the sixth power. I spelled C wrong. Is that right? Okay. Recall last week I said the goal is to just look at our original integral and write down what the antiderivative is. That's where we want to be with substitution. Substitution should be a no writing method. You just write down the answer. Go directly to the answer. Don't pass go. Don't collect $200. So I have $200 to give you anyway. That's the place that we want to be for substitution. That's what I would consider being ready for some kind of test. Is when you look at the, the seven sine of the fifth, two X cosine two X dx, you see all this stuff automatically and just write 712 sine of six, two X plus C and move on to the next one. Any questions? Substitution seem easy enough. Remember when there are no questions, that's the signal to me, substitution is easy. Let's go do something else. Here's what I want you to think about for tomorrow. Oh, oops. I want you to think about these two integrals for tomorrow. Let's flip them over. X squared plus one over X and then X over X squared plus one. And I also, with this one, I want you to think about the integral of one over X squared plus one to X. compare each of these three. In particular, these two, this one just kind of DVD bonus material because we all know this one already. This one is one that we recognize. If you don't recognize this one right away, just pretend that you do for now and then make sure by the time you show up tomorrow that you just recognize this one. And then the other thing that I wanna go after is I wanna drop this down by one. Compare X plus one over X and x over x plus one dx. First level, second level. Remember that the only technique we have is substitution. And all the integrals that we did before we did substitution. All right, that's gonna do it for today. I'll see you all on tomorrow. Everybody have a good day and thanks for playing.